So, Billy and I did buy two bikes the other day. I listed the Skag V-Ride 2 for sale, I think about five o'clock the other night. And by nine o'clock the next morning, it was sold. The guy came from like 40 minutes away, I think roughly, and he bought it. He already has a V-Ride 2, and so he knows the machine pretty well. So anyway, um, that machine sold quick. Uh, I did not sell it with the tweels. I still have them. As a matter of fact, we threw the tweels on the windstorm. So they're on there for now. Not really sure if I'm going to leave them on there or what I'm going to do. I can't really remember why. We had them on there at one point and we took them off. And I can't really remember why. I don't know if I had an issue and didn't like the tread. Or didn't like the way it handled or whatever. I can't remember. But we'll figure that out eventually. No big deal. So I did tell y'all in the video the other day when I was going over the ZK about those tires. Turns out I wasn't even thinking. I noticed right after, before we even left the shop that day, and then I told Billy, I'm like, you know what? I'm not gonna put it in the video when I edit. I'm gonna see how many people catch it. And a bunch of you did. You guys were right on point. The Skag rims are four lug. The ZK are five. So. No big deal, I just gotta move all of that stuff to get to the tire changer over there and take these off, break them down, and put those tires on those rims, which kinda sucks, cause these rims are dented up, they're banged up, they're, you know, they're not horrible, but they're not great by any means. So I will clean them up anyway, maybe shoot them with some paint to make them look nice again, but we'll see after that. Um, but you know what? Now that this has been sitting for a couple days, let's grab a flashlight and look and see if either the reservoirs went down or if um, there's any fluid leaked anywhere. Now it's been sitting for like two days since I took care of that. Okay, so starting at the top reservoir, that's the one that kept going down. It has stayed steady. And that one is still in the same spot. I don't see any new fluid. Granted, I haven't driven it around. Once I drive it around, that'll be a sure tell. Um, but one issue I did find, I don't know if you guys can really see that line that comes off. See if I can actually like stick this in here and point to it, maybe. So see that elbow right there? That one right there? The line that comes off is pretty wet around that line and the hose going down is kind of wet. But that has one of them just snap clip clamps on it where those are junk. Like one of these clips right here. Those are garbage. Um, I am probably going to take that off before I even get rolling here this year and put a regular screw clamp on there. What I do usually on hydro units is I'll pull those off and I put on the um, high pressure fuel line clamps because uh, they work way better. And I believe I have a whole box of them in the toolbox. This one over here is the same way. It's wet right around where that hose connects and goes down. Down here, the filters, no more fresh fluid. There's nothing, I don't know if you can see, nothing under the mower. So here's my verdict. This is what I think happened. Um, I think it was a combination of three things, okay? I think those filters being real loose is what coated the whole bottom. I did mention that video the other day, there's no way just those filters being loose got all that oil up here. So this is what I'm thinking. The filters being loose is what coated the whole bottom of this. Up top here, I think it's those two outer lines and the clamps that are on them. I think they leaked because they look like they're still very wet right now and they should be dry like everything else. I think that those clamps aren't holding those hoses on there tight enough and those leaked. I also think that somebody overfilled one or both of these reservoirs. I don't think it was the guy that I bought it from because he knows better and he would not do that. I know he wouldn't. So I think maybe one of his guys running it noticed they were low, put fluid in it and went further than they're supposed to just, you know, just not knowing how much they were supposed to put in it. Um, and they overfilled it and as it went, you know, hydro, that's why they only fill up to right there even though the reservoir is that big because they build pressure and this fluid will expand and it has to have that room for expansion. If not, it'll come right out the cap, um, right around the threads all the way around. So I think it's those three things. Um, the reservoir issue, just a guess, but the filters and those lines, I'm pretty much 100% certain on them.
So I will take care of those clamps before we get running it this year. I gotta switch these tires over. So, um, but it is 914 and I have to, I have to go do a bid that's actually not far from here. It's for a big place. Um, so I have to go do a bid on that this morning. I gotta meet with the maintenance manager and walk the property so I could do a bid on a spring cleanup and then mowing for the season for over there. So that's my day so far. Okay, I'm sweating. I took about 25 minutes, break them down, switch them over. Not that bad. I'll show you all what I use. I think most of you already know. I just got one of these jobbies from Harbor Freight. It's leg bolted right to the floor. You use that to break the tire down. And then you put it on there, spin this down with that star on there. And then use this long sucker right here. Spin them off, spin the new ones on. There's the ones I just painted. So they're on there. I took a hammer, pounded out most of the smashed in areas all the way around. But that one tire that was bald, Look what I found inside it. It's like a spoke off a dirt bike. Kind of looks like a push rod, but it's more like a spoke off a dirt bike is what it looks like to me. And it was inside just flopping around the tire. The tire held air, so I don't know how this got in there. And I didn't see any holes in it, but it was inside, just floating around inside there. Weird, right? I'm trying to call wake up Billy. You waking up? 10:30, boy. Get up. He's not waking up. I need him to get up, grab the pole saw of the garage, and bring it over here. Josh is coming to pick it up. So I went and did that bid, and I got it, just like that, for spring cleanup and for mowing for the year, which is nice because the church I lost down the road this year. I think I told you guys that in the last video. Um, did I? My church. I. They're doing it themselves this year, whatever. So I lost that church, but then I just picked up an account less than a mile down the road that's about $60 more a week. And actually it's less grass to mow, a little more weed whacking than the church, but less grass to mow. So good deal on that. One replaces the other, it happens like that every time. That's why I don't get mad or worry about losing properties because they just, they keep coming. But, so I stopped at the gas station over here, grabbed a drink and I ran into a buddy of mine and graduated with, his old man, and he told me that another buddy of ours that we graduated with just died yesterday from fentanyl. That shit's heartbreaking, man. It's more and more, it's just out of control. Let's do these freaking tires. So I just kind of sped it up for this tire, uh, Tire mounting here, that's the bead sealer that I use. I've gone a couple times before in the past without using it. I highly recommend you just put it on there. The stuff is cheap. I think it's like five or six dollars for that container. I've had it for like three years. I can't tell you how many tires I've done with it. You don't need a whole lot, but man, it'll save you later because I've mounted so many tires and the bead pops and you're like, great, great seal on there, good to go. And next thing you know, you got a little pin leak where somewhere between the tire and the edge of the rim every time it happens drives me up a wall but every time i've used this stuff i've never had that issue so at least the tires are going well because you're about to see something else and i'll tell you what i find one more thing wrong with this mower i'm gonna insure it for 10 grand and it's gonna mysteriously get hit by lightning because i've about had it with this thing already so when i start mowing with it this thing better be everything i want it to be and then some or I'm just gonna completely go through it in detail and fix any tiny little thing I have and I'm gonna dump this thing faster than I bought it. Cause I'll tell you what, I'm really starting to get annoyed with this mower. I think it's gonna be amazing if I can get it to where everything is fixed and fixed the correct way and not cobbed together. I think it's gonna be amazing, but I gotta get it to that point. Just like that. Tire sealer. Got the beads popped back on, guts back in the valve stem, and caps on them. They didn't have caps before, they do now. Guess what I just found. This is the mount, goes up and connects right there for the gas tank. Watch this. It's broke off. Looks like somebody attempted to weld it. They might have been blind. That's really, really bad welding. Like, really bad. It's all bubbled and chunked up. 
that's why it didn't hold I don't know why it broke but the reason the weld didn't hold is because the welds really bad yeah oh boy so wonder if I can just clean this up and tack it back together the right way in a couple places so that it holds or am I gonna have to take this whole thing off here clean it up put it back together re-weld it the right way might as well just pull it off and redo it Jesus always something but at least the tires are done all welded back together not coming apart welded the right way there welded the right way there shot a little primer on it so it doesn't rust I don't have any yellow paint good thing it's hidden by the tire I'll shoot it with yellow paint eventually but the tire and the gas tank hide it so not too concerned just want some primer on there so it don't rust Billy's here hi so now I'm gonna get this bolted back up in there so now it's the right way um, I just I didn't want to leave it or hack it and reach in there and throw a couple welds in there and just you know rough it out because I think it's like a six and a half or seven gallon tank fuel at what eight and a quarter eight and a half pounds per gallon you know I just don't want to uh, I don't want to mess take a chance with it forgot my old cane your old walking stick from last year a couple I years ago it all down there. yeah she's a beaut Clark but all right so now I'm gonna bolt this back up in there and then get these tires on here You're gonna be walking well, like that. Go to the hole. You're gonna be walking like that in a minute when I uh, when I shove that stick right up your big fat bubble hole. You better get used to the old people at the home. We just picked up that whole uh, senior living. Uh, old timers home down the road, so like we're gonna be mowing that now. Don't you do it! Right in the side of the chop. You're gonna hit your dirt bike, or actually, there's mine, yours, and then mine, <laughs> and then my little one there, yeah, and then yours again, and then mine, and I don't know what's back there. Another one of my dirt bikes, uh, Noah's four -wheeler, four wheeler, the shitter pitter, and then your four wheelers over here. All right. Anyway, uh, my buddy at the dealer just called and he said, hey, you want to come pick your bike up later today? I was like, sure. So that's what I'm going to do. But all right, I'm going to end that here. This is, we're just going to get this thing back together. I'm going to change some clamps out and the lines I told you all about. Get this mount back on for the fuel tank. Get the tires on. And uh, Billy and I have to go meet our favorite judge in 25 minutes for lunch. So we'll see you all in the next one.